Hey guys, I'm back! So uh, I decided to take a little bit of a break and now I'm ready to make some more videos. So today we're doing a review of Stilt and as you might have seen in the thumbnail, I got a little bit of a love and hate relationship with this game and I'm sure that you're super curious to know uh, why it's that. So let's go ahead and jump into this amazing platformer. So Stilt was released on March 8, 2024 and it's available on MetaQuest, PSVR 2 and SteamVR. And it's been developed by Red Games and I'd like to mention that it's very impressive because it's only been developed by three people. A game developer, a 2D and 3D model artist and a game composer. So what you'll be seeing today, uh, as I'll, I'll show footage, you'll see that it's pretty impressive. And it's been published by VR Kiwi which published games such as Operation Serpents and Cave Digger 1 and 2. So that, you know, these publishers, I, I'm starting to get a liking to it and I'll be looking forward to see what they'll be releasing next. So let's look at the game now. So the story is pretty simple, you're basically uh, an alien just driving around with your uh, spaceship. And for some reason there's this giant octopus who just wants to use your spaceship as a toy. So basically they throw you out of the spaceship and your main objective is basically to uh, get the airship back. So you have to go through all of these levels, climb a mountain and uh, you know all, do all these tasks to go to uh, get your ship and defeat that uh, octopus. And then as soon as you start moving you're thrown into a tutorial. So you know when I first started the game I was thinking oh you know I played a lot of underdogs it'll be easy to uh, you know to, to move around with that but actually it's uh, very different you know you have to move a lot di more different you you'll see I'll be a little well I'm gonna say a little bit used to the game as I die but uh, I'm a little bit better at the game because I did play the demo and uh, you know I got a little bit more used to the, the control but I remember that I ha at first I was like oh my gosh this doesn't control like underdogs at all and I just want to mention that uh, you know just the mechanics the way you move around and all of the mechanics are very very well done you know adds off to the con do, to the developers uh, it's super fluid and you know I never feel like uh, I'm doing a bad jump uh, for you know for no reason or anything like that so it's been very nice so as you go through these stage you actually get uh, different kind of abilities that you can get so as you can see here I'll get the uh, the gun mechanic basically you can shoot around enemies and things like that but you also get nice mechanics like uh, something that you can hover around with a rope that you can swing around and other types of uh, mechanics that are kind of very useful throughout the adventure uh, the unfortunate thing though is that when you get hit you lose that power up which is you know it became it becomes very inconvenient when you go through the level if you don't have these power ups for sure so it's you know the best thing to do is just try not to get hit <laughs> so the main goal of the game is basically to get all of these presents uh, throughout these levels and um, you know every world uh, you have to have at least eight presents to unlock the next world uh, so there's three presents in total per uh, per level and they're all optionals, right? So you can just make, you just have to make sure that you have eight presents in total to proceed. And then um, there's two additional presents that you can get, one by doing a time attack, uh, you know, trying to finish the level in a certain amount of time. And then another one is by collecting these stamps. So you have to have a certain amount of stamp to, uh, to get another present. Um, but you gotta be careful because if you die, it actually removes 10 of the stamps. So, you know, it, it can get very, uh, very hard you know try not to die and and get these presents but yeah there's a total of 20 levels in the game and i'd say that it takes about you know an hour to finish four levels give or take so and it took me i say it took me exactly actually eight hours on the clock to finish the game and i did play like about an hour or two of multiplayer in there but as you can see it's a very bulky game and there's a lot of replayability just because of all the presents that you can get which is kind of nice you know uh it's almost impossible to get all the presents right away you finish the game and then you can just play again and and do some more present hunting and uh, you know at, at least double that time i see that to to do the whole thing i i've seen some people uh you know do completely uh do all the trophies on playstation and that's quite impressive because it, it is a very hard game to be honest so back in march i actually tried the demo of the game and i plan on doing a, a video on it but uh, I actually didn't like the demo at all. Uh, it had some really annoying issues and I decided just not to talk about it just because, you know, I, I would be pretty negative. But, uh, you know, other people must have had the same issues because most of them are fixed now. So one of the issues that I had was that there was a countdown. Uh, so, you know, after you, you couldn't, you know, after a little bit of time, uh, if you didn't finish the level, 
uh, you would be game over and you ha would have to restart. So, you know, it's a game where I love to explore, you know, get all the stamps, take my time. And, uh, you know, it was really annoying that I had to hurry up. But, you know, they changed that up. Now the countdown is going up and you don't need to worry about that. The other issue uh, was that when you were going in bushes, uh, your whole view would be completely blocked for some reason. So uh, they changed that. Now you have like a, a transparent color and you can still uh, yeah, look at stuff even when you're in the bushes. So, you know, that's a nice addition. Um, the other issue that I had was that level three was actually really, really hard. And it didn't make sense, you know. But uh, thankfully, they switched that level to another one. And now the you know level three is now like level sixteen or seventeen, so you're a lot more used to the game when you uh, when you start that level, which was a nice addition. There's still a little bit of annoyance that you know that I that I don't really like, but it's not as bad. So what, one of the thing is that when you get hit, you get actually get thrown like uh, or project into a, a certain direction. Uh, that can be very annoying because when you get thrown in a projection and you know there's water or something like that. You die instantly, and that can be very frustrating. But, uh, you know, otherwise, uh, the game works very well. Like I said, the mechanics are top-notch. Um, you know, bouncing around, there's no issues with that at all. The weapons and, and all of that. No glitches, you know, no uh, annoying things, so, so that's really good. So, you know, I mentioned that I have a love and hate relationship with this game, and uh, the reason why I say that is because something that I didn't really like is the level design, unfortunately. Uh, you know, and the level design has a big, you know, importance, especially in platformers. And the issue that I have, you know, the first issue is that I find that the levels are a little bit too long. Um, there are some levels, you know, that I clocked in in uh, 30 minutes of game, and you know, that's really crazy. And you know, otherwise, you know, sometimes it's it's just it's a 15 minutes level. But then, if you die, you lose your progress and you have to start all over again. And, you know, that, that can be frustrating. Um, you know, the reason why the level design didn't really hit with me is because um, I don't feel like there's a lot of variety, you know. Like, after playing about an hour, uh, I don't, you know, usually with a platformer, you're always like, Oh, you know, one more, one more, I need to know what's next. But this one, after an hour, I, I just, you know, I just closed the, the game and didn't really feel like... Uh, I wanted to play some more, you know, I, I had to take a break and go uh, to, to play other things. Um, other than that, there's a lot of sections where it's not like easy to understand what you need to do. Uh, well, with this level, for example, uh, you get thrown in this, in this place, but, um, you know, after this section, you just don't know where to go exactly. And nothing is really pointing you to where to go. You have to find it by yourself, but there's like really nothing hinting. And it took me forever to, <laughs> to figure it out. I actually have to look it up online. So uh, that was unfortunate. But there are a few levels where, you know, I really like the design. And let me show you guys right now. So level 16 is one that I like because, you know, after being kind of like finding all the levels the same, this one appeared and actually you go in tunnels and you get big and you have to like go unlock things for when you go little and then you have to go a little back and then do other things. So, you know, I like the variety of that one because um, it made it very different. On top of that, they introduce you to the mechanic where you can climb on a wall. So, you know, this, this is what I want. You know, I want different type of things like that a lot more in the, in my platformers, especially. Uh, unfortunately, you know, when I was playing that, I was like, oh, this is so cool. I ran into a glitch and had to restart this whole level and, and here I was again really frustrated you know with this level and uh, it's unfortunate I, I was I pushed a block inside the wall the block the red block that you see over there and uh, you know I reported it to the developer they'll look into it they they really appreciate that uh, you know I, I sent a video to them but th these are little frustrations that uh, really got in got to me this is uh, one of the later level that really frustrated me uh, what you have to do is find like six or nine keys around and, um, you know, it takes a long time. I clocked in 30 minutes, I think, on this level. And as you can see here, uh, one of the examples is that I'm just waiting. You know, in a VR game, waiting 
it really feels annoying because you can't do anything else, right? So I know I always had to wait for this platform to come in. This was the wrong platform because I needed to go in the one that had a bump. So I still needed to wait some more, you know. And, um, you know, these are the kind of design where I, I wish they, they did a better job. But like I mentioned, it is only one person that did the development of the whole game, right? So it's, it's still pretty impressive. There's just, a, you know, some quality of life improvement. Um, I mean, you know, the level design can be really salvaged, but, um, you know, I just wish that uh, it was better. But maybe in still too, we'll see that. So there's actually multiplayer in the game, and that was super fun. Uh, you know, thanks to Super Sus who helped me out there. I got some recording uh, of the game. I uh, really appreciate it. But we did get some people joining in with us. So, yeah, that was really fun. Um, there's a few modes that you can go in. One where you have to pop as many balloons as possible. One you have to shoot people. And that was fun. They actually uh, made a new patch with a new mode, which is kind of like Hexagon in uh, Fall Guys. You know, you have to, like, go on this platform and make sure you don't fall down. So, uh, you know, they still support some new stuff in the game, which is pretty cool. Um... You know, I'm a big fan of sky climbs. You might have noticed that I talk a lot about sky climb and uh, it has some very fun multiplayer, kind of like Fall Guys. And this is a really co good contender. You know, um, I could see myself uh, jumping between this game and uh, sky climb because they're both really fun. Like I, I can't really, they're as fun. You know, that's what I mean. Like they're, they're both like equally uh enjoyable so this is just a fun part that i had in the game uh it gives just gives even more replayability right playing the game it's uh it's worth buying it just for the online to be honest it's it's amazing i really enjoyed it so guys this was my review of stealth and given what i said i still recommend the game you know uh it's super good and what might have impact uh you know in my uh opinion on the game is uh you know i did play the game to review it so that my patient is not as good because you know sometimes you're uh playing a long time on a level and you just got to move on right and and uh and finish the game so you can do your review so i think that if you want to you know if you're patient and you have a lot of time on your hand i think this is the game you know that would be good for you uh, i think with that mindset this game would be uh, you know a, a perfect score and i didn't even finish level 20 you know i gave it about 40 minutes and i decided to continue because i had enough presence to do that and, you know, for the last boss, I decided to give it about 30 minutes and I did end up defeating it. And it was a very enjoyable boss. So guys, thank you very much for coming in. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing. And uh, leave a comment if you have any, uh, you know, discussion to make about Stilt, if you agree with what I said or if you disagree. I would definitely like to know uh, what you think about it. So thank you guys and have yourself a wonderful rest of the day. Bye!